This is Free Range Digital Design Foundation Modeling. This is Chapter 6. This is actually the first chapter where we're actually doing digital design. And I refer to this as an example-driven digital design. Most other books go through all sorts of gyrations and they don't really tell you that much. Um, and I'll, I'll reference that later. So let's just get right to it. First quick review here because uh, what we're going to do is generate a circuit here, solve a given problem. The way we're going to solve it is by generating a bunch of different models. So models are a description of something and it's a description of something that gives me useful information. What you're going to see is we're going to have a bunch of different models. Some models are more appropriate than other models. And don't forget the purpose of a model is to transfer information to the person reading that model. Digital design can be done many different ways. What I'm going to describe here is uh, one approach to brute force design. So we're actually going to be using this bottom design method here. It's very limited in that it's iterative and it can't really handle big circuits as you'll see in a second here. Um, we'll very quickly get on to these modular design methods which are uh, much more powerful. So this is one approach. Essentially, I'm going to define the problem, um, describe my solutions, and implement those solutions. So defining the problem means I'm going to understand what I need to do. That's going to give me a starting point, and I'm going to describe my solution in various different ways. And finally, I, I'm going to present a model that allows me to easily implement that solution. So here's the design problem that we're going to be working with. Design a digital circuit where the output of the circuit indicates when the three-bit binary input number is greater than four. So it's it's a circuit. It has a three-bit input. It has three single-bit inputs. It describes the output here. The output means it's singular. It has one output. So this is going to be a circuit with three inputs and one output. Output's going to indicate when those three inputs, which are interpreted as a binary number, unsigned binary number for that matter, when that binary number is greater than four. Recall that for a three bit number, I can go from zero, where all three bits are zero, or seven, where all three bits are one. The first step in any problem is to draw the high level interface, which is essentially a black box diagram. So essentially a black box diagram is a box, has a name, it shows the inputs and outputs, and included in this model, if I need to put any special notes to the reader, I call those annotations, I'm going to go ahead and put them in that diagram. And once again, the approach we're going to use is, is a brute force design, iterative approach, you'll see that it's very limited, you quickly move on to other design approaches. Okay, well the idea here is I need to first draw a black box diagram. Now the black box diagram is first step in any problem I design anytime. It's always the first step. So we agreed that this problem had three inputs and one output. And so I'm going to go ahead and name these outputs. I'm just going to call it F. And what else am I going to do here? I'm going to name these inputs. So I know it's a binary number. So I'm going to do my best to name it in such a way that it gives the reader a clue to what those signals are doing. B2 kind of implies that that might be the, the binary, the bit that has two to the two weighting. But to make it clear, I'm going to put it down very explicitly. B2 equals MSB. MSB is the most significant bit. And I'm going to say B0 equals LSB. LSB stands for least significant bit. Okay, so this is this is a model, the black box diagram. Doesn't really tell us that much information. What we want to do is move to another type of model, which is going to be a table. So I'm going to describe the operation of this circuit using a table. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to make a giant table. I'm going to list the inputs and outputs directly. I'm going to use my table generating trick of bin for binary numbers and just for the heck of it I'm going to add another column in here for the decimal equivalence of these numbers. Technically that's going to help me do this problem because I'm looking for all the inputs that are greater than 4. 
arbitrarily what I'm going to do here is this for this F this is the output these are the inputs I'll go and put that on there uh, the output is indicate when the input or the three inputs however you want to look at it, is greater than four and I'm going to indicate that with a ones and zeros so arbitrarily I'm going to say when this output is not greater than four I'm going to put a zero on here so zero through three is not greater than four four is not greater than four but five six and seven are greater than four and here is my table this is kind of a tabular format for the problem describes the problem very nicely I'm done with that not very useful but it is a valid description of this circuit okay so the next step in the uh, generation of the circuit is to describe your solution now we already have two solutions two descriptions two models but they are not really overly adequate for what we're trying to do here they do present information but not really to so much to help us generate a circuit so what we're going to do here is generate our own algebra for this type of circuit design and it's going to be boolean algebra so algebra mathematical system used to generalize arithmetic operations by using letters or symbols to stand for numbers and it's based on most importantly here rules derived from a minimal set of assumptions so essentially the letters or symbols we're going to use is just 0 and 1 and we're going to magically generate some basic assumptions. These assumptions here are, are the axioms. Uh, they're just arbitrarily but we're going to accept them as true and additionally we're going to be able to generate some theorems from those axioms. This is Boolean algebra. Most books go deeply into the generation of it but I'm not going to. Essentially it's a two-value algebra it's defined on two symbols which are, are 0 and 1 and it has some associated axioms which dis define a basic set of operators which we'll see coming up next and here are the basic axioms of Boolean algebra as you can see this has a bunch of ones and zeros up there which are the basic elements of the, of the algebra and additionally we have three operators sitting up there we have this we have this dot operator we have this cross operator and also we have this this over bar operator right here so those are our three operators the dot is going to be an and operator the plus is an or operator and the the over bar is a inversion or um, complement those are our three operators now these axioms these are appropriately defined but they're not overly useful in that form so we're going to change forms on this thing and what we're going to do is take these definitions and generate uh, more appropriate more readable definitions for the and and or and inversion functions so what I'm defining these as using tables we define this whole entire circuit solution using a table now we're defining the the and or and the version of operators using tables also so these are super important this forms the basis of all digital design and so let's take a look at this so this is the and operator I mean you can read this it's defined for for two inputs but you can have you need at least two inputs but you can have as, as many inputs as you want so the or gate is defined as the output of this or gate is a zero unless all the inputs are one so the only time the output of an AND gate is a one is when all the inputs are one that was what this table is saying it's once again it's defined for two inputs you can have as many inputs as you want two or greater so the OR function here is, is defined using a table also so what we got here is the OR is defined as the output is a zero when all the inputs are a zero otherwise the output is a one so the only time this output of an OR gate is a zero is when all the inputs are zero just any at least one input to one the output's going to be a one and lastly here for the, the inversion operator what we have here is the output is just the opposite of the, of the input um, unlike the AND and OR gate this is only defined for one input it only has one output this is where this book 
deviates greatly from other books. Other books spend a ton of time proving these theorems, um, generating these theorems from the basic axioms, and it's really interesting and fun if you're into it. But in, in reality, we only use a couple of these theorems, and we do use them over and over again. There's no sense in delving deeply into these things, because it's simply, it's not digital design. The theorems we're really interested in is this De Morgan's theorem down here, and one other theorem up here, which is really useful, is the inverse theorem here. And I can't even remember the name of it. I know it's important. I know how it works, and we'll be using that later also. So once again, these theorems, I know where to find them. I don't know them other than those two theorems, and I'm, I'm doing fine. One other theorem that's important here is this double complement. Anytime I double complement something, I get that thing back. We'll use that quite uh, extensively throughout this. Step two is, once again, it's defining or describing our solution. And so we, we, we described it two ways, but now we're gonna describe it in two more ways. So what we can say here is F, F in words is A one when B two and B one and B zero are a one or B two and B one is a one and B zero is a zero or B two so this is seven so B two and B See, this is really a pain in the butt. I shouldn't even be drawing this. Zero. Now, this is a big, ugly definition. We developed this Boolean algebra such that we could use these operators. You don't really see the operators in here, but you see ands and ors. Let's rewrite this using operators. So we'll say F equals B2 and B1 and B0 or so here are, my, here are my two AND operators, B2 and B1 and B0 not. So this is the case where B0 is a 0 and B2 and B1 is a 0 and B, B0 is a 1. And essentially that is my full equation right there. So if you notice in this equation, I have I have three, I shouldn't be doing that. I have three and terms, which is, there's an and term, there's an and term, and there's an and term. And uh, these the outputs of these and terms are ordered together. So what uh, we want to do, okay, so this is a valid description, uh, but we want, what we want to do now is, is actually implement this circuit. So let's, Let's go there. So these are all my definitions I have so far. Uh, we have this tabular description here. We have a written description, which is pretty much useless. And we have this Boolean description, which is quite useful. What we want is to move towards a circuit solution. So let's go there. Like I said, you probably really want to build this circuit, uh, but you need some way of going from equations to hardware. And here's how you do it. So there's three basic logic functions. And so what we're going to do is develop three gates to implement those logic functions. Most importantly here, a gate is a hardware device that implements a logic function. So what we have here is an OR gate. Here's our OR gate, we've got an AND gate, and we also have an inverter. So these are, this is a model of a two input AND gate. This is a model of a two input OR gate. This is a model of an inverter. So once again, we can, it's not drawn here, but we can have a three input AND gate. We can have a three input OR gate, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but once again, this is, this inverter only has one input and one output. So these are, these are hardware devices. They're actually implemented with transistors. We uh, don't really want to stay at the transistor level. We want to bump up to the gate level. We want to implement our circuit with gates. And so let's do it. I'm ready to model this equation using gates. And once I have it modeled in gates, I can. it's a, just an easy step to implement it in actual hardware. 
So let's do this. What I see here is once again these three AND terms here. We'll call them one, two, and three. That means I'm going to have three AND gates for this thing. So I'll go ahead and draw those three AND gates and start filling these in. V2 is one input to this gate. This V1, it's complemented, which means it has an overbar over it, which means I need to invert that. And a V0 goes into this gate also. For the second term here, I've got a V2. It's going to get messy. I've got a B1, which is this input here, and then I have a B0, which is which is complemented, looking good. And finally, uh, for this bottom gate here, I have all three terms. None of them is complemented. There's B2. There's B1. There's B0. So notice that. When I'm using these dots here, heavy dots to indicate a connection between these lines. Right here, we see the there's no dot there, so these lines are not logically connected. Make that dot make the dots a little bit more deeper. So these are my three AND functions. The outputs of these AND gates are going to be OR together with a three input OR gate. And I am officially done with this function. This is a, a gate level description of the circuit, gate level model. Easy step to find the right ICs and, and uh, implement this in an actual circuit. So in the end, we have a whole bunch of different models of this, of this circuit. The one thing we left out in this was a black box diagram. That was our, that was our starting point. From the black box diagram, we went to a tabular format. Then we went to some uh, written description. We took advantage of Boolean algebra to give us a Boolean expression. And finally, we took that Boolean expression and implemented an actual circuit. Yes, digital design.